where else would you begin your exploration of the ancient city of St. Augustine than at the old city gates? I mean, you got to, right? Built in 1808, this once was the only entrance into the city of St. Augustine. So sit back and relax and enjoy the video. The oldest wooden schoolhouse dates back to the early 18th century and is located on St. George Street by the city gate. Visitors to the oldest wooden schoolhouse can tour the property and become acquainted with the daily life of colonial school children. No wooden structures in St. Augustine built prior to the year 1702 still stand because the British burned Spanish St. Augustine to the ground that year. Tax records indicate that the wooden schoolhouse was present in 1716 and was built for the Ginobili family. Great place to eat if you're downtown. Prohibition Kitchen. Incredible burgers. These bed and breakfast down here are amazing. Definitely recommend staying here. Very charming. Southern Wind Inn. This is Casa de Suenos. We stayed at the Peace and Plenty Inn, which is somewhere in this area. Very cool place. Definitely recommend checking it out. The oldest masonry fort in the continental United States, the Castillo de San Marcos, is a large Spanish stone fortress built to protect and defend Spain's claims in the New World. It's a national monument, and at over 300 years old, it's the oldest structure in St. Augustine. It's also one of the main attractions visitors come to see. There's plenty of things to do at the Castillo, from the numerous rooms that once housed soldiers and prisoners to the large interior courtyard and gun deck, which offers a great view of the city. 
Regular daily programs and ranger-led tours are free with a mission, as are cannon firings and weaponry demonstrations. The Castillo is open every day of the year except Thanksgiving and Christmas Day. Construction began on the Castillo de San Marcos in 1672 and lasted 23 years until 1695. Many Spanish forts preceded the Castillo, however, this one made of Coquina was impenetrable to enemy attack and was fire resistant. The fort came under fire for the first time in 1702. British forces led by General Moore burnt the city but it could not penetrate the Castillo's walls. Subsequent attacks in 1728 and 1740 yielded similar results and the British were never able to take the city of St. Augustine by force. In 1763, however, Florida became a British colony with the signing of the Treaty of Paris, thus beginning a 20-year period of English rule. The Castillo was used as a military prison during the Revolutionary War, and at one time it held three signers of the Declaration of Independence within its walls. At the end of the Revolutionary War, Florida was returned to Spain in 1784 until Florida became a U.S. territory in 1821. The Americans called the Castillo Fort Marion, honoring the revolutionary patriot from the Carolinas, General Francis Marion. The U.S. government used Fort Marion as a prison for Native Americans in the late 1800s. Natives from both Florida and the Great Plains were held at the fort during this time. The fort was officially taken off the active list of fortifications in 1900, and it was preserved and recognized as a national monument in 1924. Congress renamed the fort in 1942, reverting to the Spanish name, the Castillo de San Marcos. At over 300 years old, the fort is a lasting landmark of 17th century St. Augustine. Heather's been catching salamanders. What are they? Salamanders? Lizards? Heather's been catching these all day. Just won't leave them alone. Alright, we're getting out of here. It's raining. Yeah. Yeah, them people yeah, that was earlier. Yeah, we'll have to look in the daytime. There is something. I might just painted it on the window. Just in time. Be sure to check out part 3 for the continuation of our video.